Okay, so let's talk about another different type of test that we can do with our chi-squared distribution. So another one that we can do is called the test for independence. Okay, so this one differs from the goodness of fit in kind of like one major way. And the, probably the, the biggest way is that when we do our test for independence, uh, we don't have some predetermined probability that we think uh, that we're going to see. So like before when we did our dice example, our baseline assumption was that these uh, was that the outcomes of the dice were all uniformly distributed in their frequency of how often that they would show up. And then we did a test to see if it actually followed that frequency. Okay, so for the test for independence, here instead we're, we want to see if two categorical variables are in fact correlated or if they are independent from one another. So just like we did in regression analysis, where in regression we tried to determine whether or not two numerical pieces of data were related, and you know we associate the slope with them if they were. In the test for independence, we're trying to see if two pieces of categorical data are correlated with one another. Okay, so when we do this test for independence, we generally uh, are forming like a, a contingency table. So we'll have something to the effect of like, um, you know, do you like, do you like pizza? And we'll have like a yes and a no. And we might try to see if, about that with like favorite sport. And this could be like football. This could be baseball. And this could be like basketball. Okay, and so we could ask these questions from people and say, do you like football? Do you like pizza? They could say yes or no over here. And, and so we can figure out, does your preference for pizza, is that correlated with your favorite sport? We, we can try to do that. Now we may not have any associated like probabilities that we think of that, but maybe we think that there's some correlation between these two, or maybe hot dogs has, you know, some relationship with baseball or, or maybe Cracker Jacks or, you know, anyway, so we could do all sorts of different types of two pieces of categorical data. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our null hypothesis like this. Okay, so the null hypothesis is that we could say uh, there is some uh, true relationship between pizza preference and favorite sport and for the alternative we could say oh hold on sorry there is instead of no we should put there is no true relationship, that's the null hypothesis, no true relationship. The alternative is that there is some. There is some, and then we'll go true relationship uh, between pizza uh, preference and favorite sport. An alternative way that we could think about talking about this is the null hypothesis is that these two variables are independent of one another, and the alternative is that um, they are dependent. We still test at an alpha level of 0 0.05. Now, just like previously with the goodness of fit, we had to ensure that there were at least five observations in each of these outcomes. So here we've got these six outcomes. When we do our sample size, uh, we are, when we do our calculations, we need to make sure that the expected values are at least five in each of these, not the observed. So let's say that I went and I had some observation and it was something like, I don't know, 10, 15, 7, 4, 12, and 20. Okay, you might say, right off the bat that, hey, because of this, our observations, we don't have enough because this one isn't five. 
That's not quite true with our chi-squared. What we need to do is go and check the expected values. And our software package will actually produce what the expected values are. There's, there's some calculations that you can go through uh, based on like some of the marginals. Anyhow, we're not going to cover that. Uh, it's a little bit intensive in the calculations, but our software package will in fact do that. And we will want to compare the expected values and see, do the expected values have at least five in each? If the expected values have five in each, we are good to go, thumbs up, uh, we can go. And so what we do is we run this through our chi-squared test for independence. When we do this test for independence, uh, we want to, we still are looking at the chi-squared test score, and then we look at the p-value. And once again, if the p-value is less than our alpha, we get to reject the null hypothesis. Again, we are just writing out the conclusions here. We're not going to be doing post hoc tests. The one thing that we are going to include though is we're going to include, include like a, what's called a two-way, um, or not, not a two-way, but we're, we're going to be doing a bar graph that is done by categories. So we're going to do this bar graph for like yes and no, and then we're going to have the, um, oh, the results for each of the sports groups plotted side by side. So that we can see, it's like, do these groups, do they actually look pretty similar or do they actually look pretty different from one another? And I, we can show you how this, um, how this looks in our software package, how we can finish up to see, do we have significant results? Um, how we can write our conclusions and also how we can get a graph so that we can kind of get a visual uh, interpretation of what's going on as well.